हेलो फ्रेंड्स आवर टूडेज टॉपिक इज एस जी एल टी टू इनहिबिटर्स वी हैव टुएल्व डिफरेंट ग्रुप ऑफ ओरल एंटी डायबेटिक ड्रग्स एस जी एल टी टू इनहिबिटर इज द लेटेस्ट एडिशन इन दिस ग्रुप एस जी एल टी it means sodium glucose linked transported to inhibitors okay here yes, sometimes the name uh, sodium glucose co-transporter inhibitor is used a newer class of drug drug there are so many uh, drugs in this group three is very important number one canagliflozin 2 dapagliflozin 3 impagliflozin here common thing is gliflozin so this group of drug is called gliflozins they are insulin depend independent that means in the action insulin is not needed we can say in other group of medicine like metformin glimepiride uh, and other gliptins their insulin action is very much important and pancreas need to secrete insulin in response of medicine or resistance is decrease in response to medicine when glucose level uh, reach beyond 180 mg per dl glucose drain out via kidney it acts mainly in kidney so the renal threshold is 180 mg per and dl beyond this level if after taking uh, heavy meal or heavy uh, sugary food our glucose generally increase and it's gets beyond 180 mg per dl in this time if we uh, um, examine our uh, spot urine we can detect glucose but it is physiological so in kidney how it works i am going to describe now that is structure of nephron our kidney consists of it has mainly five parts number 1 glomerulus number 2 proximal convoluted tube number 3 loop of henle distal convoluted tube collecting duct okay and that is efferent artery that is efferent artery if we take any sugary food or a high sugary food our blood glucose spikes like that spikes and glucose enter into blood stream when blood enters when blood enters into glomerulus all the sugar content filtered out all the sugar content filtered out 
from glomerulus. But it normal some circumstance, but in normal circumstance, when everything is normal, this glucose is reabsor reabsorbed. Reabsorbed from different part of nephron and ultimately our urine don't have any sugar content this is the normal phenomenon but when this sugar level reach beyond 180 milligram per dl our urine may contain sugar residue that is all physiological process process now our concern is sg lt2 inhibitors it means sodium glucose co-transporter inhibitors. If we draw this portion separately, the picture will be like this. That is the interior of lumen, that is the exterior of lumen. Lumen means nephron. Proximal convoluted tube, that is the external portion, that is luminal portion. Okay. In the luminal portion, there is receptor. that receptor is called sodium glucose co-transporter that means sodium and glucose is transported simultaneously simultaneously and by uh, diffusion from this uh, wall it is absorbed in the systemic circulation okay in the normal uh, situation where from glomerular filtration total amount is uh, of glucose is filtered then in the proximal convoluted tube loop of Henle and distal convoluted, uh, convoluted tube glucose is reabsorbed, reabsorbed glucose is reabsorbed by this transporter. Okay. So, after absorption of total glucose, we can't find glucose in our urine in normal circumstance or normal situation. Here in SGLT2 inhibitors, we just block this receptor. We just block that receptor. As a result, sodium and glucose is not absorbed this continue to flow throughout the nephron and passes with urine and by this way the bloody body glucose is reduced blood glucose become low blood glucose is drained through 
ถ้วยยูรินโอเค with the help of this medicine that is the peculiarity of medicine Ro no role of pancreas here no role of insulin here no role of insulin resistance here okay the main function of this inhibitor is to block glu sodium glucose co-transporter and by this way sodium and glucose is drained out by the urine or with urine so that is the mechanism of action of the drug now where to use and where not to use where to use where not to use okay is g l t to inhibitor where to use where not to use you can use in every patient where contraindication is there you must restriction in the use of the drug restriction is minimum so number one you can use everywhere except in some situations then what the situation if we know what the situation where we can't use we are not permitted to use this medicine then everything is very clear okay the contraindication contraindication number one catabolic state in any catabolic state of body this drug is contraindicated number 2 type 1 diabetes mellitus type 1 diabetes type it was type 1 diabetes mellitus we cannot use the drug number 3 ketoacidosis in ketoacidosis or ketoacidic state we can't use the medicine number 4 impaired renal function that means egfr is less than 45 to 60 okay that is the main point why we cannot cannot use the drug otherwise we can use everywhere this group of drug is sometime called insulin alternative yes it's a true in case of az person where insulin level become very low we need to give insulin from external source where insulin is present in body in some amount we can use this medicine safely adverse effect now i am going to describe some untoward effect or adverse effect number 1 genital 
mycotic infection that means fungal infection of genital organ is very common because there is plenty of sugar in urine SGLT2 inhibitor inhibits reabsorption of sugar in the proximal convolutive tip by this way sugar is drained out through urine and when we pee every time per our perennial region is irrigated with sugars and other chemicals sodium important food for bacteria and fungus that's why genital mycotic infection is a very common adverse effect number 2 recurrent uti other common adverse effect number 3 renal deterioration if we use this medicine in patient with low gfr or pre existing renal disease that may be exaggerated disease may be worsen number 4 chances of bone fracture it is a rare chance we have canagliflozin dapagliflozin and empagliflozin the study shows in canvas study we have shown that uh, with canagliflozin uh, bony fracture or osteoporosis is uh, common with az patient but it is not uh, present with other group of medicine like dapagliflozin empagliflozin and other uh, newer uh, congener so here the adverse effect is the benefit is much more the list of benefit is much more longer than adverse effect and other factors so here the advantage gs advantages number 1 glucose lowering effect independent of of insulin so the az patient who is not agree to take insulin we can give the medicine safely if other parameters and indication match with the patient number 2 weight lowering effect sugar sugar into blood stream nephron glomerulus proximal convoluted tube urine glucose is drained via urine in this way blood sugar stayed always in lower level and its weight lowering effect is very vital it has weight lowering property okay number 3 bp control the medicine drains glucose along with sodium we know uh, when 
urine become highly concentrated with glucose and sodium it that is the luminal part that is the luminal part that is extra tissue space if glucose and sodium is in a high concentration by osmosis it draw water from interstitial space by the way it excrete extra 350 ml of water from body so there is a good reason why bp is in control that's why the bp lowering effect is very good otherwise that otherwise is a good choice for patient with volume overload okay for this effect patient pees frequently and there is some chance of dehydration that's why extra 350 ml of water have to take every day to prevent dehydration cholesterol control property that means lipid profile is controlled with this group overall lifestyle is maintained important for patient with volume overload it is important for patient with volume overload that feature that feature is very much vital patient with congestive cardiac failure or whose cardiac performance is not good in this type of patient this medicine acts as a very good beneficiary or it benefits very much to cardiac function to the patient whose cardiac performance is compromised okay that is all about its benefit so this group of drug is nowadays very much useful and everyone can use doctors and professionals can use to their patient to save to control to uh, keep their patient in a very stable level hb1 is in control sugar is in control and uh, you have to keep some idea about contraindication and adverse effects otherwise this group group of drug is very good